Hi, this is Tim Carr from Free Press. We're, we're back here at the National Conference for Media Reform. I'm here with Lorenzo Massili, who works w on the European Initiative for Media Pluralism, which is a really exciting opportunity to do some organizing around media reform issues across the European Union. Lorenzo, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the European Initiative for Media Pluralism is really trying to exploit this new tool of participatory democracy at uh, pan-European level that the European Union passed just a year ago, which allows at least one million citizens to collect signatures across the European Union and propose a legislative uh, uh, measure directly at the European uh, Commission. We're trying to use this tool to uh, uh, push the European Commission to pass a directive on media pluralism to guarantee the diversity, the freedom and the plurality uh, of Europe's media. And so uh, what does that involve in terms of, of the, on the organizing side? How does uh, a community that has so many different languages and has so many different issues as regard to media come together under one issue? Yes, well, that, that's one of the most exciting aspects of the Citizens Initiative. It really forces you to build uh, a broad transnational coalition of organizations fighting for the same issue, fighting for media reform at uh, international international level. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the greatest challenge for the initiative. We've set up uh, a coalition of over 100 organizations from uh, 12 different European countries. Uh, and naturally, the difficulties, as you might imagine, are, are enormous. 12 countries mean 12 languages, they mean 12 public spheres, they mean 12 different uh, uh, political sensitivities, 12 different public enemies in each of the European countries uh, but that said uh, Europe is to some extent a united political entity at the moment and this is nowhere as true as in the case of, uh, of the media uh, the situation of the media is worsening in, in Europe and it is worsening following uh, a kind of domino effect whereby the anomaly that Berlusconi represented in Italy was mimicked in Hungary by the Orban regime uh, it gave a free a free hand to Murdoch in the United Kingdom to uh, uh, reach a dominant position in the media market and it pushes especially Eastern Europe European countries uh, to give up the gains in media freedom that they had accumulated in the accession period in the early, uh, early, early 90s, early 2000s. So, so it sounds like, like media ownership, media consolidation, an, an issue that we grapple with here in the United States is a common concern across the region. Are there other issues? We, uh, For example, we're working on, on public media. How do we support a publicly funded uh, media sector? We work on issues of internet freedom. Are these a, a part of the work that you're doing as well? Or are you focused more on the issue of pluralism at the moment? Well, the question of public media is, uh, is crucial in Europe. As you know, most, if not all, European countries have publicly funded public media, and they tend to be the, the largest media conglomerates in most European, European countries. Uh, the problem is that in, a, in an increasing number of countries, public media is now coming under direct or indirect control of political power. Uh, this was the case in Italy. Berlusconi already controlled private television. Then he became prime minister, and he started controlling public television as well. Uh, Orban in Hungary has recently passed a new law, which puts the governing party of, of Hungary in direct control of the public media uh, of that of that country. Um, so the problem is uh, certainly one uh, to do with financing, but most importantly one uh, to do with the independence of the public broadcasting mm -hmm. uh, in, in European countries and the, and the independence of the supervisory bodies that are meant to guarantee the independence of the media in the country. And the supervisory bodies are also coming under increased political uh, control in a, in a number of European countries. So as an advocate working for citizens across the European Union, what kind of what kind of tactics are you looking at? Are you looking at websites? Are you looking at uh, doing events, or how do you spread the word about this opportunity to do some organizing? Yeah, the uh, the web is crucial. Uh, uh, an important aspect of the Citizens Initiative is that signatures can be collected online, uh, and we are uh, implementing quite a widespread uh, online campaigning strategy, which allows us to keep costs low, but also to reach out uh, to a younger generation, not already uh, a part of a media reform, uh, uh, media media reform coalitions, uh, or, 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 or or media uh, media organizations. Uh, an equally important aspect, and this came out yesterday here at this conference actually, uh, is the importance of explaining that whatever issue uh, you care about, be it the rights of migrants, of sexual minorities, of women, uh, you have to go through independent and pluralistic media. If you don't care about free media, you will have a really hard time uh, defending the rights of minorities who cannot get access to a controlled and concentrated media landscape. And so are you also building coalition? You're dealing with groups that deal with media reform work? Are you looking at human rights groups? You're looking at groups that deal with minority rights, immigration rights, things like that? Or is this the way the coalition is, is going to be uh, built? Yeah, and uh, that's exciting and necessary. Uh, it's necessary because collecting one million signatures means really going out of the usual suspects. You need to explain to people who might not already have any interest in media reform why media ref reform matters to them. Uh, and one way we're trying to do that is precisely making 
making links with specific uh, groups of interest, uh, not already part of the media reform uh, uh, um, media refor reform politics. Uh, an example is the uh, is the situation of the Roma minority in sure. in Europe, which is extremely discriminated and barred completely from accessing uh, uh, mainstream media, and the representation in mainstream media of the Roma minorities is extremely worrying at the moment in European countries. So we work with them, we work with uh, a Roma uh, a rights group, a human rights group working for the Roma communities and try to bring them into this campaign saying, look, if you want to militate for the rights of Roma, you have to go through uh, militating for a media that portrays uh, the Roma and gives us a speaking presence to the Roma, right. uh, which at the moment we don't, we don't really have. So, so it sounds like a real challenge. And, and so why is it that you then decided to come here to Denver to participate in the National Conference for Media Reform? Uh, is, are there commonalities or what, what drew you to uh, the work that we're doing here? Yeah, well, firstly, to, to learn from, uh, from an organization and a conference that, uh, that's managed to, uh, to do what we're trying to do in a much smaller scale uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a European level. And what's extraordinary about this conference is really the, the plurality, actually, that's represented. It's not a conference of media experts alone. It's not a conference of media professionals. It's not a conference of journalists. There are artists, uh, people from the world of entertainment, uh, people from all walks of life uh, uh, who care about media reform. This plurality is something that we haven't yet achieved in Europe and if we could find a way of bringing this uh, over uh, our campaign and over our work for media reform in Europe, it would be an absolute, absolute gain for us. Well, that, that sounds great. Thank you, Lorenzo. So if you check out more of it, it's, it, it is the European Initiative for Media Pluralism. You'll be hearing more about it in the coming months as we build towards a million signatures by the end of the year. That's the plan. Uh, that's it for now from Free Speech TV, I'm Tim Carr with Free Press. Thank you.